like in The Shining, when the two girls are so quiet, <laughs> that's like adds to the. Oh right, the, yeah, twins. the twins. Right, the terror. Yeah. Right, the terror. Well, we're not twins. We're, we're not twins. brothers. No, just the effect. He's a city guy. Sure. He's You're a country boy. Ha. Yeah. The city mouse, country mouse. Right. <laughs> Basically, we're living out. We're living a storybook. Uh, That's right. A scary, a scarier storybook, like to scare children. Some children's stories are scary. That's true. Some of the golden books, Uncle Bronto, the big ant. Yeah. Did you ever read Uncle Bronto? He's a big, sort of fearsome ant, like a dead-eyed ant. Yeah. He'd come storming into different towns and plucking the children who were misbehaving in one way or another and sort of, you know, he'd hold the child up to his face with his big ant pincers and then the child would just be terrified. Right. Um, but Uncle Bronto would be explaining to them, you know, why you can't waste water. Right. Children don't understand rules, but they can internalize fables. And if they are true to themselves, and if they behave in a way that is fair and equitable to other people, in the broadest possible sense, then they will be spared. Spared. Yeah. Spared, spared uh, life's consequences. There's natural consequences to misbehavior. For example, I don't believe that if I leave the water running when I brush my teeth in the morning, then I'm going to be snatched by an ant and shrieked at. But on I, some deeper level, on some deeper level, part of you does believe that. Right. Like you're, you're, it's like part, the adult part of your mind knows that's not going to happen. Right. The giant shrieking ant is a depletion of the natural resources of the water that's available. The natural consequences of wastefulness. I've made an assumption in our friendship that, uh, in my mind, like, oh, the nature of your childhood was just, you know, healthy and happy. Oh, it was idyllic. It was lovely. Yeah. We would go, we'd spend Sundays, our mother would make breakfast. We'd go to the library and return our Uncle Bronto book and get a new Uncle Bronto book. How many are, read it is it a series of It's a, it's a series. There's uh, hundreds, hundreds of Uncle Bronto books. It's a lot to I mean, there's a lot of lessons. Yeah. yeah. Although it is a repetitive series in the sense that most of them follow the same trajectory, which is that whatever the lesson is, behave, behave. consequence. Yeah. Uncle sure. Bronto stomps into town, lifts up the children, and he imparts whatever the message. Well, that's nice, I guess. You know, by the end of the book, the child has learned a lesson or knows that no. the. Usually not. Um, the child himself is not aware of the infraction necessarily. Um, it's us, the readers, who um, appreciate the lesson of the story. Sometimes the child doesn't know what rule he's broken. There's one, it's Uncle Bronto and the cookie cutter. It's a boy who stays home from school and eats cookies at his house because he doesn't think he needs to go to school, etc. And midway through the day, Uncle Bronto lifts the roof off the house, reaches in, grabs the child, shrieks at him. The child has no idea why this is happening. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. Uh, Uncle Bronto, it's important to say, is he's not anthropomorphized. He doesn't right. speak, you know, English. Right. And he would hold the child, and the child would hold it right up to his face, and he'd be clicking and spittling and... and And then usually at the end of the book, the child is tossed. And little move, motion lines... So Uncle Bronto tosses away, and then Uncle Bronto traipses away to the next town or house. And that's the way, that's the way those stories, I mean, they're magical. And there's a little button at the end that's the moral of the story, but oh. that's Uncle Bronto on the last page explaining to us, the reader, but someone physically present in the world of Uncle Bronto would, would hear shrieks and clicks. Neil, do you... Sorry, I don't, I don't... Do you have any kids? No. No, not... We're both childless. We're both childless men. Childless bachelors. Which is as we should be. That's true. One of Uncle Bronto's stories was about the uh, overpopulation. Whee! 